Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. So we're gonna have a chat about spark plugs. Now, when it comes to buying spark plugs, the choice seems almost endless. So we're gonna look at some of the main components of a good spark plug and help you to choose performance plug for your car. And just to look at some of the sales gimmicks and features that spark plugs have and discuss whether these are worth having or whether they are just gimmicks. Should you go for a cool plug or a hot plug? We've got a range of spark plugs available on the market today, some hot plugs, cold plugs, there's different electrode designs and different designs over all of the plug with multiple electrode tips or different materials that they've used to actually make the electrode. So how do we decide what's worth having on our car or not? There is an article on our site, I'll put a link down below in the comment section. So if you want more information on the various different types of electrode tip, you can go there for all that information. We're just gonna cover the main types that we're most likely to encounter when going to the car park shop and buying some upgrades for our car engine. So when it comes to plugs, you've got so many different electrode designs. You've got the central electrode, the J design. There's the double fine wire where tiny little wires are attached to the electrode tip and the pin. They allow the spark to happen with a much lower voltage required. You've got the flat electrode as well, which is smaller. It doesn't extend out of the end of the spark plug. It's quite close to the center electrode and there's a smaller journey there for the spark to travel and dissipate the heat away from the electrode. It's good where you've got a harsh environment and there's a lot of vibration. You've got hybrid plugs as well. Engines that are prone to a lot of carbon buildup and higher carbon deposits can use a hybrid electrode design so they've generally got two additional grounding electrodes they're used as a backup so once the primary has become fouled the spark will actually happen on the easiest path on one of the other electrodes it can even go back to the original electrode if that starts to clean up during the the burn process so it can help with reliability in those harsh engines or engines where carbon buildup is substantial so you've got the low angled spark plug design so it's a lower profile than a standard ground electrode and the angled version is a solution for a quicker path and it dissipates heat better it's got more vibration resistance as well and it needs a much lower voltage for sparking and can improve the power and fuel economy the multi ground electrode next this has two main ground electrodes. They're used primarily in rotary engines or in applications with very lean air to fuel ratios. So they, they're quite prone to misfiring because the electrodes start to erode and that causes larger spacing between them becoming more difficult for the spark to jump the gap. So multi-ground electrode spark plugs can have two, three or four different electrode designs but they only produce a single spark. But they can last longer than a single electrode in those harsh environments. You've got the surface discharge. So without a side electrode, these versions rely on the face of the plug being the grounding point. So with a consistent gap during its lifetime, these are unique as they are without a rated temperature and not suitable for cold applications due to being prone to carbon buildup. They're used primarily in rotary and high energy engines due to their very flat face designs. So the most common type of plug are the copper types. So they've got a copper core and a nickel alloy tip for the electrode. These have a lower operating temperature of around 1,083 degrees centigrade. Copper reaches about 1,400 degrees centigrade. And as a result, the electrode gaps tend to break down quicker. So effectively enlarging the electrode gap. And that's not good. You tend to get misfires with a bigger gap as the spark has to do more effort to jump that air gap and create the spark. So platinum is another material that's used. It's quite expensive but it has a really high melting point, around 1,770 degrees centigrade. So platinum, because it's expensive, is generally used for the very tip of the electrode, and it's usually in the form of a disc. It has very long life. Often they will last around 30 to 40,000 miles. For most motorists, that's getting on for two or three years of driving. Because they work at much hotter temperatures, they stay cleaner, less carbon buildup occurs. So the plugs operate at their optimum for a much longer duration of time. So 
Iridium is another material that's used and this compares very favorably to platinum. It's got an exceptional melting point at 2450 degrees centigrade. It outlasts platinum plugs. The electrode tips can be much smaller than even the platinum plugs. That makes the fuel burn quicker and is great for a performance engine. So the electrode design itself, this is um, the bit that sticks out over the plug and the spark will jump to that. So most electrodes have a, a J shape, so the spark will jump the gap between the tip of the J and the little tip on the end of the spark plug. It works effectively, there's nothing wrong with that design, they're quite good, but we've seen designs with multiple electrodes, two or three different electrodes coming over. Now, do they give you more sparks? Well, they don't. Electricity will always jump the shortest gap. So you will only get one spark in all these different electrode designs. And you want the spark to actually interact with the mixture in the engine as effectively as possible. So the amount of free air around the plug will actually enhance the burn. It has greater contact effectively with that compressed air charge. And you want the spark to happen as high up in the cylinder as possible. So the flame front is pushed down. You want a good, clean, accelerating flame front to really push those pistons down and generate the power. So the size of the spark doesn't make that much difference either to the burn. You can start a forest fire with a tiny match and that's very true within an engine. The slightest little spark is enough to ignite the fuel. So enlarging the gap is often perceived by many as being a performance mod. You get a bigger spark, therefore you get a better burn, but that is not necessarily the case. In reality, the size of the gap and the size of the spark makes very little difference. You want a good, reliable spark, that little intense flash to start the burn cycle in the engine. So should you go for a cool plug or a hot plug? So cool plugs dissipate the heat very quickly from the tip of the spark plug. It keeps its temperature low and makes the plug last longer, whereas a hot plug keeps the heat at the tip of the electrode. So the heat range of a plug is indicated by a number so you can compare the different plugs more easily. So the trade-off is to have a plug that's hot enough to avoid fouling and carbon deposits so it, it keeps the tip nice and clean, but it's not running so cool that you run the risk of engine knock and at the sacrifice of peak power. So that range will vary depending on what what we've done to our engines and the state of tune that they're in. But that is always the trade-off. So you've got to decide somewhere between a hot and a cold plug to get the optimum operating temperatures. Otherwise you'll always be misfiring and needing to change the plugs or you'll be having pre-ignition and you'll be losing power. So it is an important consideration to get the temperature of the plug just right. So iridium plugs have generally been proven to perform better you get more power out of them. You get, you get a cleaner spark and it starts that burn cycle much more easily. So how does the spark plug affect the flame front within the combustion chamber? Well, the smaller the gap, the better that is for combustion. For high injection pressurized engines especially, this can result in self-ignition though, which can actually damage the engine. So the larger the gap, the more prone it's going to be to misfire and it's not gonna be as efficient when it comes to igniting the fuel in the engine. And high pressure injection systems will give you a much smoother flame front, which means a combination of spark and the injection pressure need to be taken into account when actually deciding and setting up the car. Resistive spark plugs, the, the plugs that claim to boost the spark, delay the spark, build up a charge and then give you a hotter spark. Are they worth it? So ultimately, when you test these out, you don't get a benefit in performance. It is negligible at best. You need a spark to start the burn of the engine. And if that's delayed, you can actually affect the timing of the engine. Um, but it's insignificant. Having a resistive spark plug has very little difference or effect on performance. And you've generally paid a lot more money for this plug that's got this gimmick of the resistive feature. So again, we've said platinum plugs are good. They give you better performance. But if you've not got a high performance engine, you're not gonna see the benefit of it. So years ago, we used to get our spark plugs and we had to set the gap. You'd have your feeler gauges and a little gap adjustment tool and you'd 
bend the electrode so you get the correct size gap and you can do a little bit of fine tuning. We also had to clean the plugs. You got your wire brush and your little, um, your little file and just chipped away at the carbon that had built up to keep those plugs in good condition. Modern plugs are made with much higher manufacturing tolerances. The gaps are generally spot on from the factory and they have quite a long lifespan compared to the older plugs. So very little adjustment and care is actually required. If you notice that your plug is starting to foul up and clog up with carbon, you've probably got some issues going on in your engine that you need to look at and address. So the link below has actually got tips on changing spark plugs. There's a process that we need really to go through to make sure the plug goes in. Um, if we get it wrong, we can actually damage the cylinder block. If you get it in at the wrong ang angle and cross thread the plug, the softer cylinder block, generally aluminium, will, will be permanently damaged and require a lot of extra work. So do read our guide in the link below on how to change your spark plugs. We've got other little tips in there and the order that you should change your plugs. For example, rather than pull them all out and change them all, I've seen people do that and forget which lead goes to which cylinder. If you do them one at a time, you've never got that problem of trying to remember which lead goes to which cylinder. Because if you upset the firing order, you can cause substantial damage and problems in your engine. So I hope this guide to spark plugs has demystified some of the gimmicks. It stopped us spending unnecessary amounts of money trying to get a performance plug that in reality is not going to make very much difference to us. So most off-the-shelf plugs are pretty good. Platinum has benefits, it lasts a lot longer. If you've got a performance engine you should definitely go with platinum plugs but there is absolutely nothing wrong with the single electrode copper plugs for 90% of the cars and engines out there. So don't forget to stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And please like this video because it really helps us to get out there. See you in the next video.